Here with us now, the Hyundai Texans Radio Studio. It's head coach D'Amico Ryans. Coach, great to see you. Hey. And here we are. It's another big game week. Now, the 24-hour rule in effect here. And as we record this, it's Monday afternoon. Here we go. How hard is it, or just describe the process of balancing going over what went on. You talk about tell the truth Monday right. into we got to get ready for the Tennessee Titans and get into our game plan week. Yeah, it's, it's a balance, but we have to know. For me, I think it's always important for everyone to know, okay, why did we lose this game? Mm -hmm. Right, because if you don't know the reasons why, you have a propensity to end up making those same mistakes. So I want to clean up, right, all the mistakes and the issues. If guys got any questions about, hey, I was thinking this or I was thinking that, if there are any things, I just want to clear the air on Monday. So now we roll in, right, on Tuesday, Wednesday, we're preparing for our next opponent. That game is put to bed, and now we can move on and hopefully be better the following week. Coach, was there – you talked about playmakers making plays after the game. You and I talked about that. Can you expand on that a little bit about what and why that was frustrating to you? Was it the fact that the Jets playmakers were making plays? Garrett Wilson, Sauce, DJ, all those kind of guys. Did you kind of feel it was their guys making plays and your guys weren't at that point? Can you expand on that a little bit? Yeah, without a doubt. When I talk about playmakers making plays, right, when, uh, when we're in man coverage, right, and we know we're going against one of their top players, and, uh, Garrett Wilson, and we wanted to put hands on him, make sure we're tight in coverage, and we don't challenge him, right. right? We have no chance for our guys to make plays if we're not challenging them, all right? We're in man coverage again versus their tight ends. I feel like we have the better matchup, better players. We're in those positions. So I just told our guys, like, I expect you to make that play. And if we can't make that play, like, we can't expect to win games. If our best players – don't show up when they're in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Yeah. If they don't show up and make that play, like it's going to be very tough for us to win games. And that's what I spoke about when I'm speaking about playmakers stepping up. And as you mentioned it, like on their side, they made plays. They played tight coverage. They were sticky. They, you know, forced a lot of incomplete passes. And that's what we have to do if we expect to win games. And you did well against the run. And you got to Wilson a few times as well. But he was able to get outside a few times and make plays against you that way. Yeah, I thought overall the run game was really good. We gave up one 15-yard run. as the longest run of the day. But overall, the guys did a really good job all day of containing the run versus a really good back. And when it comes to Wilson, he got out a couple times just because, again, I talk about four guys rushing together. So we go in. Sometimes we're good, and we lose contain at times. It's just about – when you play great defense, like, you have to be consistent. Everybody has to know exactly where the other person is, is going to be, and they need to be there, right? And when we rush together consistently, containing the edges, now there's nowhere for the quarterback to escape. He has to step up, and now our interior D line can make plays. Coach, I don't ask this for you to make an excuse or say anything, but I feel like Blake has become such a, a big part of your defense how did things change just overall when he went out of the game in the first half? Yeah, Blake has done a really good job all year of continuing to earn the right to game, get more reps. Uh, he's been one of our most consistent linebackers, uh, and he's shown that. I mean, Blake stepped up, and he started playing the mic position a couple weeks ago. We lost Denzel, and, I mean, he flourished in that role and made plays. So when we lose him, a guy who's been very interchangeable, he's – He's played Sam on base downs. He's played Mike on third downs and passing situations and nickel. So just being able to have that flexibility with Blake, is it was really beneficial. Then we lose him. Now we kind of lose some of the things that we can do defensively. But, you know, again, as you know, don't make any excuses. Yeah, Guys have to make plays. But it definitely hurts when you lose, you know, some of your top players who've been playing really well for yep. you. And Blake, all right, losing Nico, those things really, really hurt you. Coach, I know maybe the Blake absence plays into this, but what about crossing routes? Because fans ask us why crossing routes are hard to cover for any team, really. And can you describe what goes into that? Oh, yeah. Uh, crossing routes, they are hard to cover. If a team knows you play a lot of man coverage, right, they'll run crossing routes to really make defenders bump into each other, and now you get a free access throw to a crosser. Uh, so to defend those, sometimes you play tight man coverage knowing you have to be on different levels. Whoever is on the line of scrimmage, you step up and you play that guy tight and you get hands on him so the other guy can come over the top. And if you are playing sometimes, when I know teams are running a lot of crossing routes, sometimes I just like to play 
zone coverage. So you present man coverage, then you just pop out and play zone. So now you're not chasing. You're actually sitting to where the crossers are going to come. And now you're able to absorb those guys. So crossing routes, it can be difficult to defend at times. If you're in man coverage and zone coverage, it should be easier and you should know the pickups. Coach, I love when you told me yesterday it's Tell the Truth Monday. Yeah. How difficult a day is that for for you? I mean, maybe it's not. But for the players to kind of, oh, man, yeah, these are these are <laughs> spots where I – should have done this or I could have done that or I did do this and I didn't do how tough is tell the truth Monday with the guys? Yeah, it's tough because everybody you see it and I'm standing there and you see it everybody's demeanor right. and like everybody is just sad looks on their faces. But you know, I always still try to come in with the positive right outlook on things, you know, but it, it's you have to tell the truth, yeah. even though some guys may not they don't want to hear it. Most guys they already know because right. they watch the film and they understand like where those mistakes are, but it's making sure everybody in the room understands all right where we had mishaps and how yeah. we correct those. Nobody wants to hear it, but they have to <laughs> they have to hear it. I don't want to say it all the yeah. time, but I have to let them They're know. just hoping you didn't see it. <laughs> <laughs> film doesn't lie. Exactly. <laughs> That's true. All right, I'm not going to ask you about injuries. Not going to do it, Coach, but I will ask you how difficult it is to put together a game plan when you don't really know exactly who might be available, right? <laughs> so you have to put together, construct a plan, and this guy might not be there, this guy might not be there. How do you handle that yeah man it's, it's so hard right you especially offensively i think offensively mm. you you want to design certain plays for you know certain receivers you want them on particular routes so it's it's hard you know when you don't know because bobby is always coming to me early and hey who's gonna be up this week yeah. you, do yeah. i got a chance for this guy or that guy he wants to know so he can get the creative juices flowing to get mm. guys open defensively not so much we just kind of <laughs> Go as we go, and whoever is in, like, they have to be in and just understand how we play those techniques. Coach, obviously, in being a big part of the defense, as it pertains to the offense, I know we talked about this a little bit, but do you and Bobby kind of sit down after the game and talk about things, you know, because obviously you want to be honed in on what every, everything is going on, but a little bit more focused on the defense. How do you kind of handle the offensive maybe tell the truth Monday with your coaches too. Oh, yeah. Uh, me and Bobby, we're talking on the plane right after we watch, watch the game on the plane, and we'll meet. You know, we met this morning before we met with any other coaches. Me and Bobby sit down, and we meet You know, over the offensive film. We go through it. Uh, chance for, you know, questions, answers. How can we get better? The main, the main things is me and Bobby working together is – how do we help our guys right, right. as best as possible? Right? How can we put them in a better position to make plays? Because that's our job. And then we get, go in with the uh, with the offensive staff. We'll go through everybody has their say on how their unit played, where we can be better, who played really well. And we just go through it. And we all, right, for me, it's always a collaboration of, okay, what can we do to help your guys? Or anybody have any ideas on how can we can help them to play better? Yep. Yeah. All right, so you played 13 games. It's not like you're three and ten after losing yeah. to the Jets. You are seven and six, right in the thick of everything. And how much do you talk about that kind of thing with the players? Because they've got to be well aware of the situation and the opportunity you have. Really, hey, you were in my meeting this morning, right? <laughs> Man, that's oh, that's you did it. miss radio. So that's the, <laughs> that was the exact thing I hit in our meeting. It's like, okay, mm -hmm. I went through the tell the truth part, and then let's flip the page. Where are we right now? We're right. seven and six. Everybody else in the division lost. We're still sitting there. We're sitting here with the awesome opportunity in front of us. Like, I love being here. I love having some adversity hit our team, right, not playing well, right? Everybody thinking you should win a game and you don't win, right? You kind of, you know, you drop the ball a little bit there. Mm -hmm. Our adversity is facing you. How are we going to respond? And I love being in this position because I love to see, like, okay, how are guys going to respond? In this, like, we have four games left. We control our destiny. If we go about these next four games the right way, we'll still be where we want to be because the ultimate goal every year you suit up is to get an opportunity to get in the dance, right? So right. we want to have the opportunity to get in the playoffs, and we control that. So it's about our guys looking forward and being excited about the opportunity, right, of what's ahead of us. Like, we have to be excited about it. We have to attack it, clean up what we need to clean up. And, man, our season is still there. The guys have done a great job this year. Their season isn't over. We still have a lot to play for. Sunday in Nashville. I know you haven't gotten too much into the Titans. 
But it is we're going to play two division games, the same team in three weeks yeah. in the Tennessee Titans, which is kind of odd. How is the preparation for that coach where you do have to play him a few times? I mean, maybe we'll get that for them, say that question for a couple weeks. But 30,000-foot view, Titans on the road, wearing those jerseys. Your thoughts about facing them? <laughs> what jerseys are they wearing? Oilers. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. We Here gotta, we go. We got to smack them up. Yeah, man. Houstonians <laughs> do not like this. You know this. Oh, you know no, this. We, we don't like that. So, yeah. it's man, what a, what an opportunity. Like, I'm getting fired up right now, and I haven't <laughs> even watched. But, man, can I? <laughs> and, but what an opportunity for yeah. our guys, man. I love, like, we get to go against, right, truly a divisional rival and the Titans. Man, like, if we want an opportunity to get to the playoffs and we have to go through Tennessee to make that happen, like, how else would you draw let's it go. up? Yeah. Like, mm -hmm. let's go. Like, yeah. everything you got right now, like, for our opportunity to get in. And, yeah, let's go against the Titans two times in three weeks, and let's let's own our opportunities. Derrick Henry is a very different kind of running back. Yeah. There's just something about him, Coach. He's one of the very best in the league and has been for a while now. What are some of the key things in w when you're trying to stop a running back like that as opposed to maybe some other guys? Yeah, the first key is don't tackle him high. <laughs> That's the yeah. first thing is you always put together a tackling plan for a guy who's such a physical runner, a, a taller runner, right? You give guys a tackling plan, and that plan, first off, is going to start, you have to attack the thighs. You have to attack him lower, try to get – his legs wrapped up, and that's how you stop him. And it's not going to be about one guy. It's like multiple guys at the ball, right, attacking him because he's such a physical runner. As a linebacker, when you were playing, he's an upright guy. I mean, he runs upright, and he needs some runway. If you give him runway and he gets downhill, mm -hmm. but if you make him have to stop and cut, then you're probably in better shape. As a linebacker, did you like playing a guy like that? Or would you rather have played a guy like Darren Sproles who could kind of make you miss? Who was more fun for you to have played against? Yeah, definitely the bigger backs. Yeah. <laughs> I'll take bigger those target. guys. Bigger, bigger targets. And like you said, it's hard for those guys when they stop and start. It's hard. For the, it's easy. You know, it's easier to defend those yeah, yeah. guys. But for me, it was always tough playing against like Maurice Jones, Drew. Yeah, guy yeah. Guy you can't really see. He's a shorter guy. You can't see him. And Okay, it's kind of like you're playing peekaboo and he just – Pops up, exactly. he's still a physical runner. Darren Sproles, who you don't want to see that guy. Mm -mm. I mean, he's so quick, elusive. So I, I really didn't like playing against those small, shifty yeah. backs because right? yeah. I just wanted to go downhill and hit people. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, you as a player, you had some wild battles in Nashville and wild battles overall against the Tennessee Titans. 13-12 win in 08 when they went 13-3. and That was a big bloodbath defensively yeah. for you guys, a, a victory. And do you remember the 09 game up there? It was in the 30s, and it was crazy. It was mm. week two. Yeah. I mean, do you do you remember these things, or do you not think about yeah, them remember, much now that you're coaching? I remember Chris Chris Johnson running past me for about 80, <laughs> for about 80 yards, probably. Yeah, I remember the bad plays. <laughs> yeah, of they course. kind of stick out. But, uh, yeah, I do remember those were some real physical battles playing mm -hmm. against Tennessee. None other more physical than Andre Johnson versus <laughs> Corey oh, Finnegan. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's part of this as you well. Who were you thinking when that happened? Yeah. Oh, man. He had it coming. Yeah. So you, <laughs> that's what I was thinking. He knew it was going to happen sooner or later. Like, Cortland was always a feisty player, and Dre just – Gave him the business. <laughs> you brought something up, though. You remember the bad plays. And Johnny was watching a documentary on uh, Notre Dame-Miami back in the day. And, and the memory that everybody has of this game, especially on the Kane side, and they lost. Do you remember some of the tougher moments more? They stand out more because you're always thinking about what you could have done as yeah. a coach and or a player? Yeah, that's always the one. <laughs> yeah. Talk about experience. I think it's just those scars that you get. And I talk about that even when plays come up or guys like – happen to, like, miss a coverage or something like that, I immediately go back, hey, I got a play in mind. Go back to, a hey, San Francisco versus Seattle 2019. And I was – and I can remember those plays just like mm. the bad plays. <laughs> I can remember them better than the good plays at times. You can't get rid of those. I mean, you just – I mean, your your brain just, if you're a competitor to me, yeah. your brain just goes back to those moments. So as a coach with players, how do you, how do you coach, get them to, to not like, how do you get this? How do you get them to flush this? Yeah. You know, a game like yesterday where everybody, I think in this building knows that wasn't us, right. that was, that wasn't us. How do you get them 
being competitors to forget all that and flush it and get ready to make positive plays, which they'll remember the positive ones too. It's just always those ones that they get beat on that they always remember. Yeah, for sure. I, I, I truly believe, and you speak it into existence. So it's just when I just ended my meeting with the guys, like guys just showed a lot of plays here where it didn't go our way. But just think about next week. I'm just thinking about all those great plays I'm going to be showing of you being in this same position, yeah. making this play, you take getting an interception, forcing fumbles, like guys flying around, making plays. I can't wait to show those yeah, plays yeah, next yeah. week. And that's I just started to build our guys up with that mindset because I know that's what it's going to be next week. We're going to be showing great plays. All right, forgive me because this is my semi-weekly question of how you're going to handle practice physically, Coach, with the players yeah. – how tough is it going to be versus, okay, don't want to beat them up too much. We got banged up. I don't know how it is for you. What can you share with us? Yeah, about now that? in this last uh, quarter of the season, you kind of you take some things off of the players, right, mm -hmm. guys? You should know what to do. It's all more mental now okay. than it is physical. There, there aren't, like, physical mistakes. It's all mental. And now it's just a matter of cleaning up the mental. Guys are, their body, they're prepared. They're ready to go. They play physical. They play fast. Now it's just a matter of cleaning up the mental uh, mistakes that we've had. So you just you'll take something off physically for our guys, not go in pads or anything this week, but just keep it short, keep it fresh, all right, and make sure we're off the field as fast as we can get off the field. Coach, do you, do you peek at the scoreboard at this time of year to see, hey, how the Jags doing? Hey, what, what what's going on with Tennessee? I know we're playing Tennessee, but are you kind of do you peek at the scoreboard at all, just as a sports fan? Or hey, we've got a I'd like to see this team lose. We talk about this all the time. Who do we want to win this game? We want the Browns. We want the Jaguars. Well, do you kind of do any of that? Kind of peeking at the scoreboard as things are going on? Not during yeah, the game. Not but during. Just yeah, I think uh, naturally, afterwards. like after the game, like naturally, you're like, okay, what happened with right. the, yeah. with the right. other? Yeah. It's just naturally that happens. And but just as that competitor, it's always like, hey, man, we can't. We can't be in a position where we're counting on someone else sure, sure. Right, to lose, right? If we can control our destiny, let's control it. So let's do what we have to do to win these games. But you always just in the back of your mind, okay, man, the other three, the other two teams, they lost in the division. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's take a deep breath. Right. It's not as bad as, yep. as it feels. We're still in the hunt. Like, let's just, let's just regroup. Let's come back more focused, more ready to go next week. I like what happened because – this league is so weird. You had a 3 nothing game yesterday. <laughs> right. Indoors. You know, you, you would think they had the elements or whatever. You had 0-0 zero, zero at the half against the Jets. You have a lot of strange things. I guess nothing surprises you after being in the league so long. No, every week. It's <laughs> you should think, like, I, I see Tim, sometimes people come out with these, like, power rankings, and mm -hmm. this team here or there is, like, you have no <laughs> idea, of, like, yeah. what's going to happen each week, right? And it's, that's the beauty of our, of our sport. Uh, because you have such great competitors, right? And the teams, I tell guys, it doesn't matter what the record is. Like, you have, I mean, you have ballers on all these teams that yeah. can make plays at any given time. A team can get hot, gain momentum at any time, and you never know, really, how that Sunday is going to play out, right? And that's the, that's the nature of what we do, and that's why it's so exciting. That's why it's probably one of the most popular sports. Well, Will you watch Monday Night Football or at least peek at it while the Titans are playing the Miami Dolphins? Oh, yeah, I'll check it out. I'll check it yeah. out. I'll try to get as much work as I can just on their previous games, and then I'll watch some Monday Night Football tonight. Would have liked to have seen Packers and Giants yesterday and us tonight, so we'd have to sit through the rain, but no, that's a different sure. story for another game. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, a little different situation. The conditions ended up not being a terrible factor, but the first half it was kind of tough. I was almost hoping we were going to win that thing two to nothing and thought it was going to head in that direction. The elements at all, a problem for the guys at all yesterday or just yeah. kind of fought through it? I think guys fought through it. I mean, you can tell some guys were slipping a little bit on, on the surface, but for the most part, to tell guys, man, I've we've been in. I've well, I've seen much worse than that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? you coached so in San that, Francisco. You seen yeah. some stuff. <laughs> seen a lot of you know bad weather games. Uh, there wasn't an excuse yesterday with the weather. I think just just how we executed just didn't didn't show up. Yep. Amogee Bank asked coach question of the week. All right, this is coffee with the coach on Texans TV. So, do you drink coffee? Mm, yes, I, I do drink coffee. Started drinking coffee when I started coaching. Just trying to. I was a young coach coming in as a QC, spent a lot of hours. It's hard to stay up in some of those meetings. <laughs> so I was trying a lot of different things. Sunflower seeds, Red Bull, that didn't work. So Coffee was, like, was it. Coffee was it, and coffee has stuck with me.
Oh. Why, how important, and it looks like you still work out a yeah. lot, Coach. So how <laughs> important is that, though, for you mentally to keep working out? How do you go about that? Yeah, I, I make sure I get at least three days in working out each week. And it, for me, it really, especially on Tuesdays as I start game planning, just put a break in my day just to get an hour at least just to, you know, clear my mind. And then it helps me to come back and focus a little bit better in my second half of the day. But I really believe you have to take care of yourself, right? You have to make health is at the utmost importance. So you have to be healthy, right, to make sure I'm at my best you know, for the players. Coach, our buddy Ted Johnson used to say that he could go back at any point and play three plays. That's it. He could go <laughs> back in and play three plays. You think you could do it? Three plays, goal lines. <laughs> Suit me up. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, all Keep right, it good. in a short distance, man. Yeah. I He's can... like three plays and he'd get out. Yeah. That's it. He, but he could go three. He could do that. That'll three work. plays on goal line. All right. I got history. You. All right, yep. coach. Thanks a lot. Good right. luck this week. Thanks, guys.